Time the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Garcia from California for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and, and thank you, uh, Attorney General Garland, for your service to our, our beautiful nation. Uh, I was looking forward to having some uh, uh, detailed questions regarding this budget and the nuances of it, where we're going as an appropriator. That's what I'd like to spend my time. I'll, I'll put those through formal correspondence. Uh, because, frankly, something you said in, in your written testimony in your opening statement really kind of disturbed me. And I want to talk about that a little bit. But I want to I start first by just reading uh, the mission statement that's on your, your DOJ website. It says that uh, you are to enforce the law and defend the interests of the United States according to the law, to ensure public safety against threats, foreign and domestic, to provide federal leadership in preventing and controlling crime, to seek justice for those guilty of unlawful behavior. Uh, what disturbed me in your opening statement, uh, your written uh, testimony, there's a line in here where you said that I am pleased with the progress that the department has made since I be appeared before you last June. And I can't wrap my brain around why you would be pleased with what's gone on in the last, call it, year to uh, 18 months. Uh, in the last year, we've seen crime spikes like we've never seen before, 54% increase in shoplifting, 43% increase in police officers shot around this country in the line of duty, 59% increase uh, in officers killed uh, since uh, 2021. 80% of Americans report that they are concerned about the crime and violence. Homicides nationally increased by 5% in 2021 when compared to 2020, that number is 44% uh, uh, compared to 2019. Gun assaults jumped 8%. 12 cities nationwide broke annual homicide records in 2021 and car thefts rose by 14%. I don't know what is pleasing about that progress. In addition to the crime rates, we're seeing record inflation approaching 9% now and a budget increase of only 6%, which is effectively defunding our law enforcement agencies and the grants we give them. You dissolved uh, a couple of months ago, inexplicably, this China initiative that allows the U.S. government through the DOJ to prosecute China's uh, espionage, cyber uh, security threats, as well as their IP theft. They, they are currently stealing roughly $400 billion to $600 billion of IP from the United States in its aggregate in terms of economic impact to our businesses. Yet the DOJ dissolved the China initiative. I don't understand what's, what's pleasing about that. We have an executive branch and a president who is effectively opening our southern borders, looking to revoke Title 42, has already revoked in, in principle the Remain in Mexico policies that were instated in the last administration. Uh, and, and, and this is literally leading to the deaths of Americans nationwide with this national fentanyl problem and this record-breaking uh, rate of deaths as a result of this fentanyl coming across our southern border. This last week, we saw Texas National Guardsman Bishop Evans killed while trying to save an illegal immigrant who was smuggling drugs into our country. I don't know why you're pleased about this progress. Uh, I, I, I want you to explain that if you can, but I also just don't understand. This is all inexplicable and inexcusable to me. Uh, what What is, in your opinion, if, if this is good progress, what is the biggest threat to the United States right now? Uh, look, the enormous increase in violent crime, which began in 2020 before we came into office, is enormously concerning to me. And that is why, as soon as I did come into office, we developed a major strategy to fight violent crime, which focuses very heavily on our joint task forces with state and locals who are responsible at the first level for every kind of violent crime you describe. That is the reason that we have asked each year for more money for grants for state and local law enforcement to fight that violent crime and with our assistance at the federal level. So we're asking for $8.2 billion in grants for the police uh, um, to be able to do that. And we're asking for $20.2 billion for our own federal law enforcement on that regard. That's what I'm pleased about, the way in which we are reorganizing ourselves to fight this terrible violent crime threat. I also, it's not correct that we've dissolved our attacks, our response to China. Quite the opposite, we've stepped them up. We're asking for even more money for counterintelligence uh, and cyber defense. Uh, but we are worried not only about China, but about Russia, 
and about its immediate threat to us and about North Korea and about Iran. All of the things that you are concerned about, about China, I remain concerned about. Nothing in our program reflects a diminution in that. I'm out of time, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. And at this time, the chair recognizes Congressman Case of Hawaii for five minutes of questions.